Welcome to episode five of the Blue Collar Coder Introduction to React series. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I enjoyed making it. So in this one, we're gonna learn how to, about how to use React hooks to store state and also listen for events. It's going to take your React app and make it dynamic, which is really cool, but it can be a bit overwhelming to learn that all in one video. I tried to figure out how to break it into multiple videos, but I gotta say it you know, was better suited for just, just one. So if you feel overwhelmed, be sure to just watch the video again and, and get comfortable with it. All right, without further ado, let's go jump into state management and events. So now we're going to allow the user to be able to search for the Pokemon that they want. So the first thing to do is go and add an input tag. And then we're gonna go over to the CSS and format it, make it width 100%, make the font size larger, give it a little padding, and to make it look nice. And we wanna track the value of that input. So we need state. So we're gonna use what's called a React hook. And to do that, we're going to use react.useState. And useState returns an array. It has two items in it. In this case, the first one is the current state, which we'll call filter. And the second is a function called filter set, which sets that filter. And then we'll go down to our input and we'll say that the value is filter, and then we'll handle an event. So in React, you handle events by saying on and then the event name. So in this case, on change, because change is called whenever a input field changes, and then we give it an anonymous function. In this case, that anonymous function takes an event, and we're gonna use filter set to set the value of the filter to the target value coming in from that event. Now, in order to use that filter, we're going to add on another method onto our table array iterator, and that's dot filter. Dot filter allows us to apply a filter to an array, and it returns the array where only the array elements that match the criteria specified in the function that's given come back in the array. So in this case, we're gonna be given a Pokemon. And we're gonna say that if the name.english includes the value of filter, we're going to show that. We're gonna allow that to pass that filter. So if I go over to the browser and then I type in bulb in this case, it narrows it down to just Bulbasaur. Now, there's a little bit of a trick here. It's gonna be case sensitive, because includes is case sensitive. So I'm going to use to lowercase to change English to lowercase. And then do the same for filter. And that's gonna make it a case insensitive search. So now, we wanna extend our application a little bit. We want to be able to have the user select a Pokemon and then get more information about it. So let's go and wrap the table in a div. And then in that div, we're going to use a grid layout. So we're going to say display grid. And then we're going to specify that the columns, the grid template columns are 70% and 30%. Give it a nice layout. There's a little gap between them of one rem. And then we're going to go take that table and the input, and we're going to drop it into the first div. And now we need some more state because we were going to allow the customer to select a Pokemon. So we're going to create another React use state called selected item. And then down below the div that includes the input field and the table, we're going to add another div that's going to be shown if we have a selected item. And the way that you do that is that you use a syntax where you say open curly braces, and then you give it your conditional, as well as ampersand, ampersand, and then the HTML code that you want to display. 
So in this case, the conditional is if there is a selected item, so just selected item, an ampersand ampersand, and then we'll go and add some HTML code. And we'll just say that we wanna show the selected item's name in an H1. So how do we have the user select a Pokemon? So we're gonna add a new custom event to our Pokemon row component, and it's gonna be called on select. And we'll even add it to the prop types. We'll say that on select is a function. That's a prop types dot func. And we're gonna add a third column with a button. That button's gonna say select. And the on click handler for that is going to call our on select and then give it back the Pokemon that it was given. Now, if I save at this point, we get an error because on select is not a function. We haven't actually given it an on select down in our array iterator. So let's go do that. So we'll go and add in here on select and then give it a function. That function is gonna take a Pokemon because that's what we've specified as what's gonna come out of our custom event. And then we're gonna use that with the selected item set use state function and give it the Pokemon. Now we can go over to the page and we can click on any of these and we're selecting the Pokemon. Really cool, right? So let's make this even a little better. Let's go and give us some more information about that Pokemon. So we're gonna create another component and call it Pokemon Info. It's going to take the name of the Pokemon as well as this base structure. And that's all that information about the combat strengths of a Pokemon. And it's going to do the H1 at the top with the name in English. And so to use our new component, we're gonna invoke that just the same way that we did Pokemon Row, but we're gonna do a little bit differently. We're gonna go and say that we wanna send along all of the attributes of the selected item. Now, you'd think that we could just put in there selected item like that, but that's not quite right. What we need to do, we need to spread all of the properties of selected item into properties that are then mapped onto Pokemon Info. And to do that, we just open curly braces, and then use the spread operator, which is the ellipses dot dot dot, and selected item. So in that case, every key that's in selected item is mapped to a property that goes to Pokemon Info. That's why name now goes across and it works just fine. And now base is in there, but we're not using it yet. So let's go and define our prop types. So first we have that name. It's a shape property that has English on it. So I'm just gonna bring in some code that does exactly the same thing for base. And now notice that I've also added this is required. So for example, HP is a required number. So you've got prop types dot number dot is required. And we can pretty much use that wherever we want to in this because everything is going to be required. All right, we're still looking good. So the last thing we wanna do is show all of the base values. We wanna show the combat strengths of this particular Pokemon. So we'll create another table up in Pokemon Info. And we're gonna do another iterator. But in this case, we're going to use object.keys on base. Now object.keys takes an object and returns an array of all of the key values. So in this case, it's gonna be things like Attack, HP, all of that stuff. And then we're gonna use that same map function to take that key and then return a row where the key is the key, name of the key. And then we have TDs for both the key as well as the base value with that key. Now when we click on select, we get the Ivysaur with HP of 60, attack of 62, and so on and so forth. It's a nice way of being able to iterate over an object and show all the keys and values that are in there.
Okay, well, I hope you've learned something new. If it's overwhelming, of course, feel free to rewatch the video again. I think that's free on YouTube, as far as I know. In the meantime, uh, you can click on that description, hit the newsletter link, and get that newsletter that'll give you a day earlier access to these videos and everybody else. If you have any questions about this video, be sure to put those in the comment section down below. If you wanna tell your friends about that, I would love it. Be sure to like and share this video if you want to. Of course, I'm always down for a subscribe. I love my subscribers. In the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.